بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello my friends I am Professor Hussam Al-Fallal from Mansoura University, Egypt Our topic today is horizontal faculty chopping Because of the several well-known advantages of pure chopping techniques I invite you all to shift to and to master this technique Horizontal chopping can be performed in different grades of nucleus hardness. However, because of the absence of cortex and even nuclear shell in brown cataract, there is no space to accommodate the chopper in a safe manner. So, it is wise to avoid horizontal chopping in these very dense huge nuclei. Also, the very soft nuclei are difficult to chop. The ideal one to chop is a moderately dense nucleus. Horizontal chopping utilizes a compression force generated by the oncoming chopper over the stable faculty tip to fracture the endonucleus along the naturally present cleavage lines in the crystalline lens. The direction of this force is centripetal, hence there is no stress on the capsular bag or the zonules. So, this zonal friendly technique is the safest one, especially in cases of zonular compromise, for example, pseudo-exfoliation cataract. Also, horizontal chopping is the only way to chop a freely mobile lens segment because if you try to utilize vertical chopping forces, the segment will dislodge off the FACO tip. Horizontal chopping depends on two tools. The chopper, which is the key instrument, and it represents the axe in wall splitting, and the vacuum generated at the aspiration tubing, which stabilizes the vacuum needle inside the endonucleus to act as a chopping log that receives the oncoming chopper. All choppers are made of a thick gauge wire to achieve a wedge effect. Because the horizontal chopper is placed deep behind the endonucleus, its tip must be blunt to protect the lens capsule. And some surgeons consider horizontal chopping is a safe technique in cases of small pupils. The chopper tip is long and is of different sizes to accommodate different nuclei thickness. So whether the tip is straight or curved, and its inner side is sharp or blunt does not matter. The most important point in vacuum machine settings is to adjust vacuum level to match the nucleus hardness. Hard nuclei require higher vacuum levels to withstand the great compression force needed to fracture these dense nuclei. On the other hand, a soft cataract may need zero vacuum. To optimize the holding force of vacuum, ensure a deep FACO tip placement to reach the firm endonucleus. So, retract the sleeve of the FACO needle to expose more metal. Also, bury the FACO tip completely into the endonucleus. The role of ultrasound is just to impale the FACO needle into the endonucleus. So, press the foot pedal to position 3 for a very short pulses or bursts and rapidly return to position 2. As FACO is steps built on each other, the preparatory steps are essential. A relatively non-leaky incisions, especially the chopper's sideboard, helps a stable anterior chamber during the chopper's maneuverability. Intend a slightly larger anterior capsular axis, especially in dense large nucleus to facilitate peripheral chopper placement. Hydro dissection and the nucleus rotation should be performed efficiently and for the beginners, hydro delineation helps identification of the endonucleus equator. Shave the anterior cortex and the anterior epinucleus within the confines of the capsular axis to expose your target, the endonucleus. Now, you can estimate the actual volume of the endonucleus and the amount of separation between the endonucleus and the surrounding capsular bag. We should emphasize that the chopper should be placed in the epinuclear endonuclear space 
and do not the subcapsular space. This is the key for safe and successful horizontal chopping. The initial chop. This is the most important and the most distressing step in the technique. With both the chopper and the faco tip are within the anterior chamber, start the placement of the chopper around the endonucleus equator. The chopper touches the central endonucleus and maintain contact as it passes peripherally to hook the endonucleus equator. This is safe to ensure you are in the proper space. Again, never place the chopper superficially or in the subcapsular space. Tilt the chopper tip sideways to reduce its profile as it passes under the anterior capsule when the rectus is small or the end nucleus is very large. Otherwise, vertical orientation of the chopper in regular cases is not so problematic as the anterior capsule is stretchable. Nudge the endonucleus slightly with the chopper to ensure you are in the correct place. And the capsular staining is helpful for anterior capsule visualization during the transition learning period. With the chopper maintained in its place engaging the peripheral endonucleus edge, depress the faco pedal from position 1 to position 3 to activate the ultrasound for nucleus impalement. The faco tip is placed as proximal to the anterior capsular excess edge as possible. This ensures a maximum amount of the nucleus sandwiched between the faco tip and the chopper. Thus, the nucleus will be cracked into two complete halves in one chop. Direct the faco tip vertically downwards towards the optic disc and impale it deep in the endonucleus. This helps maximal subsequent compression of the engine nucleus. Then the chop. To achieve a successful initial chop, follow the next. The chopper will move towards the impaling faco tip, which acts as a chopping board. Pass the chopper in a straight line towards the center of the faco tip. This prevents spinning of the nucleus. Maintain the chopper's movement until it reaches the faco tip. Then do lateral separation to ensure a complete fracture of the nucleus into two halves. Keep the chopper's tip vertical and in a sufficient depth throughout the chopping motion. Feel the chopper's motion. In a soft nucleus, the chopper's motion will be felt as if it is moving in an ice cream. On the other side, in a hard nucleus, you will feel a resistance to the chopper's motion. Take your time and don't hurry. In these hard nuclei, maintain the compression for few seconds to give time to the compression forces to fracture the nucleus. You will feel a snap. After a successful initial chop, the operation is simply as a stop and chop. Ensure the two halves are completely separated. Then each half is chopped into two, three or four by segments according to the nucleus grade. Each by segment is then impaled, chopped and emulsified in the safe zone. Thank you for attention, waiting you in the next lecture.